I recently posted a proof of this theorem that a 2 to the n by 2 to the n chessboard with one corner removed can be tiled with tiles of the form like that one, a 3 square L-shaped tile. And I did a proof by induction that I called non-constructive, but lots of people in the comments came to say, that is a constructive proof. So let's talk about that. The proof by induction very quickly goes like this. You first prove the two by two case, and then if you to prove the induction step, if you have a chessboard that is two to the k plus one inside, you divide it in four pieces, you put already one piece in the middle, and now each one of those squares has one corner removed. Then by the induction hypothesis, those are two to the k by two to the k, those can be tiled because a corner is removed, and therefore, I can also tile the 2 to the k plus 1 uh, chessboard, and that proves the induction step, and therefore, by induction, you can do it in all cases. And then I even showed in my video that you can use that proof to construct a tiling, uh, because, for example, if you have an 8x8, eight eight, you can divide it into 4x4s, four you can divide those into 2x2s, two and then tile it all the way. So how is this not constructive? But what I said in the comments is that this proof is recursively constructive, which is very different from constructive. Why so? Because this proof tells you how to go from the previous step to the next step. It doesn't give you a formula for what is the tiling in the nth case. It only tells you how to get there if you know all the steps from the first one up to the nth one. So, for example, if you have a chessboard that is 2 to the trillion by 2 to the trillion, then you actually need to do this a trillion times before you find out what the tiling is in the trillionth case. And that I consider to be a far cry from a constructive proof because a constructive proof would give you the formula for the nth case and exactly for every spot where the tiles are located. The, form, the proof doesn't give you that. The proof gives you an algorithm that will produce a tiling. Therefore, the proof itself doesn't construct the tiling. If you consider that that sort of algorithmic way of finding the tiling is a construction of the tiling, then any proof would be constructive. Because if you have a proof that has already shown that there is a tiling, then there is, well, there is a finite, infinitely many possibilities for where all the tiles would go, and you can go through all of them and find the tiling. That's an algorithm that works, so uh, every proof would be constructive. There is, in fact, 2 to the n by 2 to the n minus 1, choose three possibilities for, for how tiles would be placed, and therefore you can just go through all those possibilities. That's a terrible algorithm, and that's a terrible way to describe the tiling, but that's an algorithm that would provide the tiling. Is that constructive? Here's another example that shows that constructive and recursively constructive are very different things. For example, the prime numbers can be recursively constructed. The first prime is 2, and then the nth prime is the smallest integer uh, bigger than 2 that is not divisible by any of the previous primes. Then that is a recursive definition of the prime numbers, but I think you would agree that it's hardly a constructive proof of the prime numbers because it doesn't tell me what the nth prime is. It just gives me an algorithm of how to find the nth prime, and I would absolutely not call that constructive. 